In the year 1999, the world was covered by a storm. Water surged from the ground and ascended into the sky with everything it touches vanished from existence. As the storm reached down, time reversed to 1996. Now there was one exception, a place that was not affected by the storm, the Sand Pavlov Foundation, an institution with a collective of humans and arcanists, all united by a common goal, pushing humanity forward. Underneath this foundation, there is a special school called the School of Primary Defense of Mankind, and in the school, there was a student, Virtin. Virtin was no ordinary student, she was taken in by the foundation when she was just a month old, making her the youngest to join. But she wasn't too keen on following the rules or attending classes, she was driven by a desire of freedom and an insatiable curiosity about the world outside of the foundation's walls. During one of the storm that reversed time, she stepped outside and came back completely unharmed by the storm, just like her mother had been. This act didn't go unnoticed by the foundation, and they now have their eyes set on her. Now, the foundation has been determined to keep the storm under wrap since it first happened, away from the public eye. So, when Virton started asking questions about the storm at a school gathering, they did not take it lightly. She was confined as a punishment. But confinement couldn't hold Virton's spirit. She break the lock and escaped the confinement room herself. And that's when she met the rain, another student locked away. Together, they shared what they knew about the storm to each other. And the rain showed Virton something intriguing, a pamphlet about the storm and how the foundation was trying to keep it hidden. It was written by Manus Vendicte, a group that believed in supremacy of arcanists and saw the storm as an opportunity to change the world. While the foundation has been trying to conceal the storm's existence and investigate its origins, Manus Vendicte has been actively disseminating information about it. There effort to spread the world had given them an advantage, attracting numerous arcanists to their cause. They even deployed critters from Africa to distribute pamphlets throughout the school. Back at the school, Virgin and the Ring started rallying others who are curious about the world beyond the Foundation's walls. In the evening, just as the Ring was worrying about no one would come, Matilda, Isabella, and many others showed up. They're all curious about the outside world. The Ring shared the pamphlet he collected, Matilda shared things she experienced when she was young, Mesmer Jr. shared her family's history as a psychologist and the football field near her house. Their past experience converged into a colorful picture of the world outside of the foundation. Isabella noticed that the poem on the pamphlet fits perfectly with the school's anthem, and everyone decided to sing the poem during the parade ceremony so that the school leaders can hear their pleas. <gasps> what? What are they singing? Watch out for the guard battens! Don't get hit! I said shoot it above them! Why did you shoot it at them? With Manus Vendicte intensifying their effort of brainwashing after the incident, dropping not just pamphlets but also supplies, maps, and survival guides, and knowing that the school leadership clearly does not want to heed their wishes, Virtin decided to make an escape using the Iron Defense Tunnel under the school. Constantine is already aware of Virtin's escape plan and had even been facilitating things behind the scene. She used the inspection to push Virtin's escape plan to the same day as the storm. I need Virgin to grow the way I prefer. Why? We can't do this. This this is too cruel. Everyone, except for Virgin, will be reversed. I've been looking forward to her transformation since 1999. And I need her to learn the price of rebellion. Virgin and her friends began their escape. Suddenly blowing a few spots, crowded wards, and windows that's left unlocked. The escape proceed without a hitch on the path paved by Constantine. What a well-planned malpractice show. No wonder. But giving me this fine vodka is just... A treat for my dizzy head and half-shut eyes. <laughs> Interesting. Your flying ace reporting for duty. What? What is that noise? It's scary. It's thunder. It's about to rain. 
everything goes so well today. Too well, maybe. Making me uneasy. You really think escaping can be so easy? Your duty is to eliminate the Eliti House in the campus, not attacking the students. <laughs> Seriously? Is more practice a compulsory course in your foundation? Stone or Swift! Okay, she's now temporarily paralyzed. Seems like you won't be needing my notebook anymore. We chose a different future. But future has no right or wrong, Zanetto. Let's open it together! Three, two, one! May the freedom be with us. Burton. Do you want to be the timekeeper? Well, that is the story of how Virgin became the timekeeper. This is actually chapter 3 of the game, but chronologically speaking, this is actually the beginning of Virgin's story, which is why I made this part 1. There will be 3 more parts of the main story upcoming, with the Chicago Investigation, which covers chapter 0, 1, 2, and Loyalties and Legacies, which cover chapter 4. I will also cover chapter 5 and continue the series with future main story win updates. Overall, this is a relatively large scope project, having to go through the entire chapter and rearranging some part of the story, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This has been Steam X. thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.